Okay, better? Yep. Okay. All right, um, you see my screen? Yep, Crazy James is 80,000 tiddler model. No, this one's the little one first. All right. I'll explain it. Um, so basically, this has been over a year-long project, collecting tweets from the president, from different hashtags about the president. Um, so it's just a really simple, easy-to-use database system designed after a political satire cartoon. So you can either watch the video. Why would he say that? The president also tweeted, Can you, you hear it or no? If Tweak is worried yeah, about a bunch of poor-ass third-world rice pickers, think again. Oh, my God. So then you can hit enter and you enter the whole thing. Um, all the texts are called floating text. That means I tell them what to do instead of having Tiddlywiki tell them what to do. So as you can see, they move into the proper places where I want them when you scale them down. See? So this one has 2,800 tweets from Donald Trump from January 17 to April 2018, and 2,800 tweet records from the hashtag Kami Herring's tag. tag. Um, here are some popular searches that you can do. You can click on them. It'll bring up everything that Trump said about witch hunt. Or if you want, you can go over by month and year. And I have the hover effect going on these. So you can get a quick view of what's actually in that location. Okay. Then this is a neat tool. This is a tool that lets you search any word in all of the tweet records. So we can type in president. As you can see, it's slow. So it gives you all the tweets from Donald Trump that has the word president in it. Like that. Then it'll go by location. Then it's broken down in the comedy tweets, everything about the president. And it's broken down by what each user um, and Twitter. So you can see, okay, let's see what this guy had to say. Click on it, and it brings you up to them. Um, the user is this one right here timestamp, location, the tweet. Um, this one's a retweet. You can tell because it's RT. And the source for this person was a Twitter web client. Okay. Then if you ever, if you want to know the stats of the Kami here and um, hashtags, you can click on that. And number of links, 6,127. Number of retweets, 11,000. And so on. Get the unique tweets. The first tweet started at 8-6-2017 at 16.45.09. And the last tweet in this archive ended at 9-06-2017 at 14.41. So there's 123 um, replies by IDs and, and 160 in replies um, using the at. Tweet rate for this was 2.6 tweets per minute. And these are the top tweeters. Um, once they're done, you can click on them and see all the tweets that made them the top tweeters. Can you show us the code for that? Not yet. What do you mean not yet? Because there's no code for it yet. That's oh. why it's not, it's not, they're not done. Where'd you get the number of links? All right, not yet. <laughs> and it'll, it'll go, I got all the details for you. Hang on one second. All right. So I'm going over the interface first. And I went into the UI user interface and changed all the icons to match the theme I was going for. As you can see up here, the close button is a dead Twitter upside down. If you want to edit it, you hit the tweet button. As you can see, it runs super slow. And you can edit it if you want. These are the code. Um, using a lot of filters, listing. Um, right here is the code for the images to make them float and to t basically tell them where I want them to be. So 
So you're floating your images to a specific location. Right? Yep, to a specific location, and it's going to move where I want it to move as you scale it down instead of doing it randomly. Yep. Okay. And you got the pictures down here, all taken off the internet with credit to all those people. And you can go through the project notes. Um, and he, and I'll tell you what I've been doing with everything. Um, this is a really small project compared to the original. The original was 82,952 tweet records. So I have that up so you can see that. Um, and it's broken down like this. You got 2,900 tweets from Trump, 57,000 um, from the inauguration. That one, the uh, source for that one has over 150,000 um, tweets for that one using that hashtag. And they have 22,000 for the commie testimony, which the original one has 70,000 tweets in it. So that brings us to the data source. So this is the original data source where I'm using the Twitter API. It runs every 10 minutes and it gets what I tell it to get and gets me all the information about the users. Um, you get the username, text created at, the time, the coordinates, the user language, if it's a reply, the user ID for Twitter, their profile image, the source that they use, all their friends, all their followers, um, their locations, their statuses. And this is all done by a custom um, program and using formulas built into Google. And this is the summary. So these runs off of formulas that goes through and gets everything, tells me the top tweeter um, is glory to the Republic. That's 15. He had that person had three ads and 7% of that person's posts were on um, retweets. Then we got the number of links right here and right here up on top is the formula. Okay, so you, you're doing all your math and calculations in Excel. Correct. So that way, yep. yeah, so yeah, yeah. all this stuff gets done. Then, right here's another one for the inauguration. Um, right. Wouldn't open any of these up if you want to open them unless you have a really powerful computer because these are a lot of information to go through. Right, okay. So... Yep. Before I go into, I have to format this to what I want. So I just click on stuff and hit delete for the stuff I don't want for the tiddlywiki. So that way I can port them, um, import them. Okay. And that's how we got all the stats. Mm -hmm. So this is a 100% data driven, um, all by spreadsheets. Yep. So that way, if I want to, I can go through, edit a spreadsheet, and I'll port it through and put everything where it needs to be. Unfortunately, um, like you said, you're limited to the amount of information you can have in a tiddlywiki, which at times came really frustrating. I was hoping for more, but it is what it is at this point. Um, brought up a huge discussion in the uh, tiddlywiki community about why it's actually like this and they should make it so it's more scalable for big um, data information sets like this. So I guess they're going to try to work on something like that to speed it up. And that's all I have. Cool. Could you show us um, one of your tweet records? Yeah. So this is a tweet record. Go in there. There's no information up here. It's all driven by the spreadsheet, which I'll show you is, this is after I formatted it. Because I didn't want all that information in the tiddlywiki. I did want it all in there, but reality is it was going to slow down the system way too much and not make it feasible. I don't know, actually know if that's true. Yeah, I've, I've tried it. So the more fields you have in the tiddler, the slower it goes? Correct. Not the more tiddlers. 
the more um, you get more tiddlers, um, you get more tags, more tags you add, it slows down. Um, anything you do, you add on to it slows it down, especially the search function, because a search function um, searches everything. So right. Anything with that word, it searches. Right. Well, it, not, you, can, you can limit your search. I think it, yeah. Yeah. Think, yeah. yeah. Yeah, you can limit your search, and I'll show you how. You can limit your search to a field. Correct. Yeah. Uh, so and I'll show you how to do that. Okay. Um, does anybody else use search at all in any of their projects? You use search, right? I thought the filter operator would have the system. You use search in your filter. Yeah, everything's in the filter. So you, you use the search as a filter operator. Anybody else? I think so. Yeah. So, yeah, so, so the search by field or any other thing, all you do is click on this and you can search by date created, the followers, the location. So we can search on location and it brings up two that is <coughs> president. Can you, can you show us the code for that search? Um, you know, one second. It's yeah. just Added text of a, a or something in the match being captured. I think so. I can't remember. Okay, so this is the code the code for the search. It's just a transclusion from this one right here. Um, let me pull it up. As you can see, it runs really slow. Yeah, but it is what it is. You gotta learn to live with it. Right here's some more custom icons that I did. You need to click your advanced search button. Yeah. There it is. So this is all the code. And I just modified it a little to match what I wanted to do. So it's that. Yeah, it's this whole thing that Tobias did. And I just modified it just a tad, um, so I would search what I wanted to search in. Okay, so this was somebody else's, this was like a thing you found out there that was... Okay. Correct. Oh, that's cool. Okay, so it's an advanced search by fields. Okay. And I changed the icon for clothes to the red Twitter thing. So it's all, everything here is pretty much custom. So scroll down until we can see the filter with the word search. Okay. Or it's, it's not even, no, it's going to be down further. It might be, it might be a, wait, there it is. It's, no. Um, yeah, I don't even know where it is. I thought it's macro name equals search and field, field equals four dollars, yeah. I have no idea how he's doing it. Okay, I thought I thought he might have written it, but yeah. So, well, right here it's right here is the search. Yeah, but there's a there's a filter, there's a search function, there's a search function or search widget. I can't remember what it's called. It's a DVD. So search for search. It'll show you how to do it. Was, that's what the code I was looking for. Okay. Yeah. Cool. No, but you didn't even need to go there. So thanks. You're welcome. Yeah. And. Um, Oh, and I made it so you can hide everything too if you wanted to. Right. Nice. Okay. A lot of graphics. Yep. Nice. Nice. How did, yeah. How did you do those? The do what? How do you set the custom icons? You got to go into the UI, um, user, the user interface. You got to find the icons. And all these icons, I created an illustrator and had Illustrator convert them over to SVG for me. Okay, can you show us the, can you show us one of those icons? Um, okay, so, um, so there's two ways to do this. I had a feeling this is how James did it. Uh, can, can you edit that, Tiddler? Yeah. yeah. Uh, one wrong move and you destroy your whole tiddly wiki. 
So the way to prevent that, it, 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 not really, but yeah. yeah. So modified shadow timber. Um, so this shadow tiddler is called scroll up a little bit, dollar sign, da da da, colon slash, UI button slash close. So it's the tiddler. And somewhere else, this tiddler is closed when one display the close button. So an alternative approach would have been to clone or to have created a new tiddler called James's custom close button and then found where the close button is called and changed that call. Um, but still be modifying a shadow. Yeah, you're still modifying shadow tiddlers. It's just the question, which one do you want to modify? Do you have the backup? Yeah, so um, you've got like, so do you all know how shadow tiddlers work? No. Anybody else do any shadow tiddlers? Yeah. Well, aren't they sort of like the, the skeletal structure for the baseline of the tiddler? Of, 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 of the week, yeah. That's what they are. So how do they work when you modify them? Did you modify shadow fiddlers too? Yeah, I did some modification on them. So if you don't like your modification, you get that little button that says you can revert to the default version in the plugin core by deleting this tiddler. Yep. So if it's sitting on top, if you delete your own modified one, the other one comes back. Um, so the challenges with modifying shadow tiddlers is, and we didn't face those in our projects. But when you go to upgrade your Tiddly Week, I don't know what version, James, you're running here. If you got it off of Tiddly Spot, it's 5.1.14. Yep. And the yeah, release version. Ones don't update with it. 15 is released, 16 is in beta. So because I don't know how to do it, I didn't modify. I don't, I don't own Tiddly Week 5.tiddlyspot.com. We upgrade the Tiddly Spots. And that's Matt. He should upgrade his thing to 15. I don't know how to do that. Well, the funny thing, um, Steve, about the new TiddlyWiki, the um, 15, this actually ran slower on the 15. Yeah, so I mean, there's times you don't. So it's like it gets the version, but if you want to upgrade, there's an upgrade path. And when you upgrade your shadow, your chain shadow tiddlers present a challenge. Because it, it will overwrite your changes. So that's like why you want to think about it if you're into a production mode. Class mode is fine, but yeah, no, that's very cool, and that's a good way to do it. Um, yeah, I kind of like the, you know, I would think that for buttons, I I kind of keep his buttons and call them and call mine instead of changing the default buttons. That would just be know, my strategy, probably, because now anytime you see it. So either way, um, did you? And, but you'd have to figure out where the buttons are closed. That's really where the buttons are called. That's pretty annoying. So. Yeah, thanks. It's um, right. thanks, James. That's very cool. I like all the I like the little dead Twitter. That's my favorite. <laughs> dead bird. Who's ten thirty? <laughs>